For our first example of doing an integral in spherical coordinates, I want to redo the one that we first did with cylindrical coordinates, just so you can see the difference. Um, now the difference is not the picture. We know what the picture looks like. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared equals 25. It's just that sphere. Uh, Z equals three squared X squared plus Y squared is just a pretty narrow cone. I'm gonna give myself a little space to draw it though. And what we're looking for is the volume of this little cone in the middle thing that has, looks like it has a little bit of ice cream on top of it. Now, the integral setup should always be the same. I should have integral, integral, integral. Um, remembering that this is volume, and this is actually the volume here of a little tiny spherical box, right? I always have to include the rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. I'm supposed to start drawing rays. So I'll start drawing rays, because that's what rho is. It's distance to the origin. So rays, 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 rays. Now what I want is what is rho when those rays enter the region? Well, they all enter the region at the origin. Rho is zero at the origin. So they enter the region when rho is zero. You can see that every single one of those rays in this example leaves at the sphere. And we know that the equation of this sphere is actually rho equals five. That came from our example of graphing. So this is just five, that's not so bad. The hard one is gonna be the phi. And let's just talk about what, what we need to do. As we are drawing all of these um, rays, what we need to ask ourselves is what was the smallest phi ever was and what was the biggest phi ever was. Well, remember that phi is zero when you actually go vertical. And you can see we included that one. So phi equals zero is there. Now, what we need to know is what happens. Um, how do we get our hands on the biggest possible angle? Well, that has something to do with the cone. So what I'm going to do is at least start by looking at the equation of the cone and see what happens. Um, I see z equals three. Well, let's change it to this first. I'm gonna change it to z equals three r. I mentioned that r is not in spherical coordinates, but it shows up in a lot of the calculations. We know that z is rho cosine phi. We know that r is rho sine phi, so I get three sine, let's see, I want three rho sine phi, yes. Now, we're sitting out of the sphere rho equals five, so we can divide both sides by rho and be okay. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by three and divide both sides by cosine phi. So I'm gonna get one third over here. Over here, I'm going to get sine phi over cosine phi, which is the tangent of phi. In other words, at any point on the edge of the cone, the, the phi is gonna satisfy tangent phi equals one third. Um, we can solve for phi and get phi is equal to the arc tangent of one third. And that's going to give us our biggest phi. Let's see here, so that's gonna go way out here like this. So that's arc tangent, make sure we can see that, yes, of one third. And now we get back to another easy one because we want to know what theta is I was using uh, as I was drawing all those rays. Well, think of it this way. Um, if you were to stand in the middle and start and thinking of, instead of thinking of drawing rays, you know, poking straws down into the ice cream cone, right? You'd have to turn yourself all the way around to make sure you hit every part of the cone. And so we need to make sure that we actually go through um, a whole circle of zero to two pi and that will actually give us the integral in spherical coordinates that does the same example that we started with, with cylindrical coordinates.